in the final example number six, what we're going to do is we're going to graph our, our fourth degree polynomial. It is a U shape. You're seeing the U or double U -E shape here on the screen. What we want to do on these, it's a little bit different. We have to take the zeros that are given to us and see if there's any of those zeros that we know exactly what the decimal or the fractional value is. So this decimal is not one that I know. I know that 0.5 is a half. I know that negative 0.33 repeating is negative one third. And the one behind it that you'll be able to see on your on your computer is somewhere around a, I can't quite remember what it is, 0.26 something in which I didn't recognize that fraction. So when I give you these, these should be fractions that you should be very well familiar with. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the ones that we know. I know that one half goes in there evenly, so I'm going to use the coefficients of 6, negative 25, 9, 3, negative 1. We're going to run through our synthetic division and bring down the 6. We'll take half of 6, which is 3. We'll add it to um, 25, which is a negative 22. We'll take half of a negative 22, which is a negative 11. We'll add that as a negative 2. We'll take half of a negative 2, which is a negative 1. We'll add those together, which is a 2. Half of 2 is 1, and 1 and a negative 1 is 0. So we've just gone from a 4th degree polynomial, and we depressed it to a 3rd degree polynomial with this remainder of 0. So now we're going to divide by the other, other 0 that we knew. That negative 1 third should go in there evenly. Drop down your 6. So we're just going to divide by 3 each time. 6 divided by 3 is 2, so that's a negative 2. That's a negative 24. We're dividing by 3 is a a negative 3, so negative 24 divided by negative 3 is a positive 8. Gives us a 6 if we add. A 6 divided by negative 3 is a negative 2, and a negative 2 and 2 is 0. So what I have left is a 6x squared minus 24x plus 6 equals 0. we got to solve this quadratic equation, and they all have a common factor of 6. So I'm going to factor out the 6. It's going to be x squared minus 4x plus 1 equals 0. Now, the factor of 6 that we have here is not going to help us at finding 0. So I'm going to ignore that factor of 6 because it can't cause it to be 0. And I'm certain there aren't any factors of 1 that will add up to a 4, so we're going to be back to our quadratic formula. So to find the values of x, we have to take the opposite of b, which is 4, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 16, minus 4 times a times c. So it's 4 times 1 times 1, which is 4, all over 2a, which is 2 times 1. So doing a little bit more of our simplification, x has to equal 4 plus or minus the square root of 12 all over 2. I'm going to break up my division, so the monomial division becomes 4 halves plus or minus the square root of 12. I'm going to do a little work over here on that. Square root of 12 has a perfect square in it. It is 4. And the square root of 4 is 2, so I'm going to rewrite this as 2 times the square root of 3. So that square root of 12 is 2 times the square root of 3, and then we're divided by 2. And then I'm going to simplify those. A 4 divided by 2 is 2, plus or minus the square root of 3. And that's my other x values that I'm getting from the graph. So I have um, these zeros. We had 1 half. We had a negative 1 third. And then we had 2, plus or minus the square root of 3. This 2 plus and minus the square root of 3, those should be those values for those decimal numbers that you see here. If you want to test them on decimals or any graph on your calculator, you can, but that should satisfy um, that equation.